breathe in. I took a deep breath as soon as it started. It was good. I was going to start all dramatic, but I didn't. Hey, everyone. Welcome to episode 5 of Ryan's World. Title still pending. It is March 2nd, 2017, 9.02 p.m. I did not record a podcast leak because I've been fucking busy. Well, I've been fucking busy along with me not having time alone to record these things, which I spend 90% of my time alone. There's just people here walking in out of my room. Not people that are fun to hang out with, keep in mind. I have not talked to a human being outside of work in maybe three weeks-ish. And that's weird because I've been, I've been out of the house. I haven't just been on the computer like I usually am. Although on the computer, I'm usually more social than I am in real life. I've been hanging out in public. I've been in coffee shops writing like a fucking hipster. I've been writing a book. I, I don't know if I mentioned this on the last podcast. It's about being fat. <laughs> if, there, if there's one thing I know about, ladies and gentlemen, it is being fat and unattractive. That is my jam. I am good at it. I plan to stop being good at it. Speaking of that weekly weigh-in, 345, I am on the way to becoming a slightly presentable human being. Making progress. Eating right. For the most part. I had a cheat day the other day, but it was planned. I do not believe in spontaneous cheat days, but I do believe in planning planning ahead. I went to Albuquerque and went to some bars with my friends and decided, yeah, I'm going to do that because I never see my friends. I am a hermit, and that's the one time that I'm going to allow myself to just drink lots of beer. I didn't even eat bad. Actually, I did eat some pancakes. <laughs> it was mostly beer. Lots of beer. I love beer. And then I had some pancakes, which it's okay. It was one day. I planned for it. I accommodated the next day with a fast. We are good. That's how you do things. I have I have control now of my life, sort of. But I'm, I'm recording this podcast after drinking a bunch of whiskey and mostly so I can... Re- Occupy my mind to resist the temptation to buy Zelda Breath of the Wild because I love Zelda. I've got a history with Zelda. I don't. I don't. My history with Zelda is not any more special than anyone else's. But I think I just burped in this microphone. Ocarina of Time was my first Zelda game back on the N64, and I don't know. I was a dumb kid. I played mostly platformers and action games, you know, kid games. I didn't even know what Zelda was back in 98. I I never had a Super Nintendo or anything. I mean, I've played them all since, but... Part of the fun was going to... Part of the fun of playing games during that era was just going to, like, a physical rental place, like a Blockbuster or a, uh, a Hastings front row seat, you know, or maybe you don't if you're young, I don't know who the fuck listens to this, back then we had to leave our house to purchase entertainment items, but we'd go in there, we didn't have the internet, so we couldn't look, we couldn't look up games to see if they were good, I mean, you could go read Nintendo Power and stuff, but I was, I couldn't afford that at the time, I still can't afford Nintendo Power, Nintendo Power is dead and I can't afford it, it doesn't exist anymore, but you'd go in there and you would basically go to the game rental aisle and look at all the boxes and then pick a game based upon (coughs) cool box art. Yeah, I coughed into the mic. Go fuck yourself. (coughs) I did it again. So we'd go in there and look at cool box art and look at the back of the box and make our decision based upon that. You know, I I was in third grade. If you look at the box art of Ocarina of Time... There's a golden background with a shield and a sword, and it says The Legend of Zelda on it. And I was a dumb kid, as most kids are. Kids aren't smart. Don't People give them credit. Oh, my kid's so smart. No, your kid's dumb. He'll be smart when he's an adult. She'll be smart when they're, she's an adult. I'm not... Fuck off. This isn't a gender thing. Well, it is. I was actually going to talk about gender, because being a dumb third grader, I would see the box art and read The Legend of Zelda and think, I don't want to play a game where you play as a girl. Sexism is real, people. I never rented it. 
I, <laughs> I rented other stuff. I played a lot of games back then. So one day, I was home, and I asked my dad if he could rent me a game on his way home from work, and he comes home with The Legend of Zelda, Ocarina of Time. And I'm thinking, eh, I've seen this one. I, I wasn't interested. But I didn't have a lot of games to play at the time. This was also back when games weren't cheap. Games are fucking dirt cheap now. And Nintendo 64 games were like 70 to 90 bucks, sometimes more, sometimes less. But they weren't, you couldn't just pick up five games for a cheap price on a Steam sale like you can now. So I got maybe two games a year. One on my birthday, one on Christmas, if I was lucky. Because I was a third grader and I have a job. My family was never wealthy enough to like give me a big allowance that could actually afford games. I, I was super jealous of this kid. He would like mow a lawn and get 20 bucks from his parents or his neighbor. He, he got like two sources of lawn mowing income. Parents, neighbor, both paid 20. And their yards were fucking tiny. I would pick up dog shit and clean alleys and get like $7 for five hours worth of work. Fuck that. I'm getting off track again. I do this a lot. I'm sorry if my tangents annoy you, but this is supposed to be natural and free-flowing chain of thought. And my chain of thought goes fucking everywhere. So, Dad brings home Zelda. I wasn't interested before. Didn't have a lot of games to play. So I pop that thing in. Play it. I could I read really well. I was a literary kid. I spent a lot of time with books. So, even at that young age, I started Zelda. Named my character Zelda. Because I thought, no, Zelda's on the box. Must be the main character. No, it's fucking Link, you stupid third grader. So I named my character Zelda. Started playing the game. And I fell in love. It was the first game that I had played that had story. It had characters. It had, well, I mean, other games had story, but not like Zelda did. And I didn't play. This is just... My experience, I know this video game elitist out there saying, The Final Fantasy and Chrono Trigger. Fuck you, I didn't play those when I was a kid. Played them after. I actually haven't finished the Final Fantasy game. Chrono Trigger's pretty great, though. But Zelda was my first game that had dialogue and characters and choices and a st- story. You went on an adventure. You got to ride a horse. There was a sense of progression in Zelda that you couldn't find in other things. Well, that I couldn't find in other things at the time. And holy shit, that game was good. I was hooked. Ocarina of Time became my favorite game of all time. I was obsessed. I mean, it was only a rental, and that game was long for the time. I I actually don't know how many hours it would take me to complete Ocarina of Time today, but I seriously did finish that game, like, probably 30 times, because I didn't have a lot of games to play. We rented it, and I remember whenever it was time to take it back, I was maybe on the third dungeon. I was in Lord Jibu Jibu's belly, and I threw a fit when he took it back to the video game floor, like, you know, third grader, kicking and screaming and crying, can we rent it one more time, please? And they didn't, so that's where my shitty paying lawn work comes into play. I saved up to buy The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time for like six months. I was... We used to... I would like... I would ask my parents how to make money. I was in third grade. I couldn't get a job. I repeat myself a lot. So I started raking leaves all the time. Picking up dog shit. Barely getting any pay. Every night I would like dig through the couch to find quarters and stuff so I could stash it in this big water jug I had in my room just so I could... Save up a little more money so I could buy Zelda. It was also uh, saving cans like a hobo. I'm a fat kid with a fat family. We'd all drink lots of Coke, and I would empty out those Coke cans and rinse them out, and then go to the garage and crush them, and then just save up giant fucking bags filled with crushed Coke cans so I could take it down once a month and maybe get $5 for, like, I don't know, four giant trash bags full of Coke cans. It took me so goddamn long. 
to afford Ocarina of Time. And god damn it, it was worth it. Worth every shitty fucking poor dollar per hour ratio thing that I did just to play that game. I mean, after that. I would say still, after all this time, it might just be biased due to the circumstances which surrounded me actually acquiring that game. But Zelda is up there. It's top three. My top three in no order is Zelda, Metal Gear, and Max Payne. And yeah, I've played every Zelda game since. I went back and played all the old ones. And tonight, in about one hour, Breath of the Wild comes out. And I'm broke. I'm not asking for it. This is not the purpose of this. I'm just distracting myself for it. I'm saving money for things that might make my life better than a new Zelda game. Like, uh, I might go to Portland soon for a trip. And I can talk about that on here. I need life experience. And all of my introverted, anxiety-fueled, neurotic bullshit, I have almost zero stories to tell because I don't leave my house. I have a lot lately. I still don't have stories to tell. But this is Farmington. This place fucking sucks. So, Breath of the Wild comes out in one hour, and I am not buying that fucking thing. Not yet, anyway. I'm going to wait. My tax return still isn't back yet, and when I get that, you bet your fucking ass I'm going to be balls deep in some Zelda. Not the person, you fucking pervert, but the game. I'm going to shut myself off from the outside world. Oh, wait, I do that anyway. I don't fucking talk to anyone. And I'm going to play Zelda until my fucking eyes bleed. I mean, of course, I'll go to work so I can buy more liquor and Zelda games, but... I need me some Zelda in my life, people. And it's coming. Just not today. I have to wait. I have to be responsible. I have to use the discipline and self-control that I use for other things to not spend my money on Zelda so I can go out of town, maybe have an adventure, see something new, see the ocean, and generally expand my perception as a human being. That'll be fun. So yeah, enough about Zelda. I have uh, I've been out of town spontaneously since the birth of the wee baby Hayden. You know, I hope you heard my last emotional podcast. That's probably going to be the best one I ever do. I want to keep doing these things. I enjoy them. They're therapeutic. I hope someone's enjoying them as well or enjoying mocking me. <laughs> Either way, as long as my voice is out there and those who want to hear it, hear it, then we're good, all right? But I've been going back and forth from Albuquerque to here often, which is eating my Zelda budget, motherfucker. But I've had fun. I mentioned earlier that I went to some bars, me and me and my friends. My friends and I, I'm a grammar snob, Went to, I want to say, eight or nine bars one night. We had ourselves, by the time we were drunk, we had kind of like a world's end idea going. We picked a brewery on the opposite side of where we were at and hit every place from between the two. My dog is whining at the door, and it derailed my train of thought. I think eight or nine, though. And that... Brewery at the end, I think it was the Bosque Brewery that was our ending goal. That was our world's end, like the Simon Pegg movie, the Edgar Wright, Nick Frost joint. So we were going from bar to bar, drinking lots of beers. We hit up a cigar bar that was really nice. I like cigars. Basically quoting the world's end, shooting the shit. I did a live stream on Instagram about that. Maybe one person watched it, so... I, I should stream those more often. I mean, someone has, someone has to want to see it, you know? Even if they don't, maybe they'll, maybe they don't realize they're going to want to see it until they see me bullshitting into a camera. And then they'll think, this is, this is what's been missing from my life. I need to hear this guy bullshit at a cell phone camera or a fucking blue snowball microphone. And it'll make me feel better about myself. 
because I'm not as fucked up as he is. I'm not as bored and weird as he is. Maybe that'll happen. <laughs> but yeah, we were walking down the street, quoting World's End. Uh, the the quote that stood in our that we kept repeating with me and my second little brother Bo was "Leave the light on, fair lady, for though in, we shall return with a twinkle in our eye, in truth we will be blind, drunk." And that was fun. There's a lot of weird shit to see in Albuquerque. I'm not. It's like a I don't want to say a culture shock, because that implies the culture exists in Farmington, where I live, and it doesn't. There is nothing here. I've been trying to think about places that I can go to be more social and talk to people, and they just don't exist here. Tomorrow I'm going to a Mardi Gras thing at this terrible fucking bar in our town. <clears throat> also, I'm the designated driver. How fucking shitty is that? <clears throat> but I expect it to be terrible. I expect it to be full of flat brim wearing shitty bearded Farmington douchebags that just want to talk about trucks and motocross, which it's fine if you're into trucks and motocross, whatever. It's just not my thing. I don't belong here. Not a place. I have never felt like I belonged anywhere, but I've been in Farmington my whole life. But going to these Albuquerque bars, there were some of them were fancy. They had like cool designs. There was art inside and outside on all these buildings. I mean, I'm acting like I've never been to Albuquerque before, I've, but it's just cool to see things like that because I don't get to experience that ever. Then you have conversations with people that are like, they know about culture and art and inter things that I like to talk about. Which I don't get, ever. I, I mean, I do with some of my online friends. and The occasional text conversation has some depth. But <clears throat> here it's basically just people bitching about work all the time, which is horrible. Nobody wants to hear about your shitty fucking job. At all. I don't regale people of stories about my job because it's boring. There's more fun things to talk about. Although maybe... Maybe this is why I don't talk much. Maybe maybe other people like hearing about people's shitty jobs. I mean, there are a few people that exist where I actually want to hear about their job, but most of the time it's like, oh, I was working customer service. And then, see, I'm, t I'm telling you about it. You're probably already bored right now. Don't turn this podcast off. I'll, I'll stop talking about jobs, I promise. But it's just fun. There was jukeboxes there playing good music. There's a bar there that plays a lot of Acid Witch and some Clutch. You know, like metal. Here, the jukeboxes play mostly country music or pop music. And every now and then, there's this one guy at a bar here that'll fill it full of interesting things. He plays the sword a lot. I like that. But I have never had a bad experience being social in bigger towns. I need to get out of here. I need to go somewhere, even if it's not Albuquerque. I'm a lost human being, and I need to escape. But it was fun. Drank, smoked cigars. I got to see the wee baby Hayden again. She was still in her incubation thingy, so I didn't get to hold her or spend much time with her, but seeing her was important, and I was there for that. So. I also had an interesting experience up there. When we first got into town, my mom, uh, this guy, this other guy that came with us to help us take Tyler's car up there, and me were standing in front of an elevator. I think my brother and his girlfriend were with us too at this point, but we were standing in front of the elevator, and in front of us there's this twitchy, nervous-looking tweaker man pacing back and forth. Scratching his neck, looking really shifty. And I'm just staring into space, thinking about nothing, as I often do. My mind gravitates between neurotic and going at a million miles per hour to absolute blankness. If only I could find a middle ground. <coughs> but I was staring off into space. And this guy looks at me. And he pauses. 
gets real close to my face and says, You fucking laughing at me? And I, it took me a second to comprehend what had just happened, and I just kind of looked at him and I was like, No, I don't even recall laughing, sir. And he's like, Good. Fuck it, sick of that shit. And then he gets in his elevator and then pokes his head back out like a fucking cartoon character, like, Ugh, you, you narrowly avoided trouble, mister. And then the elevator closed behind him and he leaves. But I spent, <coughs> got a cough still. <coughs> I spent a lot of time thinking about that. And, how the people in my party reacted to it. The guy that was with us to help take my brother's car up, I'm not going to say his name, he might find this. He'll know who he is if he does, but... He's like, man, if that guy did that to me, I would have kicked his fucking ass. I'm like, that's not necessary. We don't know that guy's story. He might have been high. He might have been... I mean, he was in a hospital, so what? whatever he was doing there is stressful. Hospitals are never relaxing places. I don't think a knee-jerk, violent reaction is appropriate for any of that. I mean, it was weird, too. I'm a, I'm a big dude. You've probably... I don't know how many strangers listen to this, but you've probably seen me. I'm not... I'm an intimidating-looking guy. And this dude was like... Maybe a head shorter than me and super skinny, so maybe he thought he could take me. I don't know. <laughs> but you don't walk up to someone twice, three times your size and try to start shit with them for no reason. And if I want to get existential and overanalyze this short, meaningless confrontation, I think the reaction of my friend is the source of a lot of evil in the world. People need to pick and choose what they give a fuck about. And small, strange-looking guys asking you weird questions and then walking away is not something worth getting violent about. There would, There's no reason for me to uh, egg this fella on. I did the right thing. Well, of course I did the right thing. There's no doubt about that. But why would you even want to start shit with some random guy? And if some random... I don't know. My reaction to aggressive strangers is to defuse the situation. I don't want to get in a fight. I don't need to get in a fight. i got better shit to do, even though I don't have much shit to do, than get in fights with strange, tiny men. So, it was weird. I don't have much else to say about that. So I've been writing a lot. I have maybe 40 pages written on a book. Oh, I also stopped by Shia LaBeouf's thing. Not that that's important or I have much to say. But Shia LaBeouf has that, uh camera set up in Albuquerque to where people can walk up and voice their discontent with Donald Trump or whatever. It says he will not divide us in bold letters above the webcam. And it's being broadcast 24-7 live on the internet. And I stopped by that for shits and giggles. Hung out for a few minutes, took a picture. I heard... There was nothing special. I heard a lot of ignorant political conversation. I think... I mean, everyone's entitled to their opinion on this stuff, but this whole fake news... By the way, it's called propaganda, you illiterate fucks. Is fake news just easier to say? Jesus fucking Christ. But all this propaganda has people kind of riddled and confused, and they don't, they, don't, they don't really know what they're saying. And it's kind of sad on both sides. I'm not just picking apart conservatives here. If people want to talk politics, they should do their homework. And what's what's really funny to me, and this is slightly unrelated, but almost every day on Facebook or Twitter, whenever you see a certain celebrity voices discontent about the Donald, and then there's like a bunch of 
butthurt snowflake angry conservatives you should just stick to entertaining us you're a you're a you are entertainment you're an actor you don't have a real job what you have to say isn't important and some of these actors have good things to say not good things i'm not saying they're good just because they fit my personal political worldview bias but they have things that are thoughtful and interesting and things that could potentially start a conversation or make you think outside the box a little bit your occupation should not affect whatever you can say politically especially if you're one of these ignorant fucktards reading Breitbart or whatever the left equivalent of Breitbart is and just spamming whatever the fuck they said Bill, how about Bill Maher? I know a lot of people that just watch Bill Maher and then repeat what he says anybody as long as they educate themselves properly about the issue, regardless of profession, should be heard. Or their opinion should be considered. I don't know if it should be heard. I have a podcast that should be heard. Hey, I think my highest listening, or my highest listener account is like 14 or 15 on one of these things. I bet they stopped after 30 seconds though, but. <laughs> Get your voice out there, people. Even if no one listens to it, it's good to get all that out. And if someone does listen to it, maybe you'll change a mind. Maybe you'll inspire someone to think. If I was to ever get involved politically, it would probably, I, I wouldn't get involved politically. I'm too much of an asshole. But it would be through punditry. I would talk about things and hopefully influence some other minds which hey i'm recording a podcast right now that's ironic isn't it but hopefully influence some other people to think and educate themselves about issues i don't want to tell you all what to think i just want to say if you think something question it question everything do your homework research it and just come off come out with an enlightened opinion try to Try reading news stories that you don't agree with. Try following pages that you don't agree with. Try hearing things from different angles. I spend a lot of time watching, like, I lean left. I'm, I, I've been registered independent that leans hard left. I've never voted Republican. And I spend a lot of time reading conservative news and watching, like, I don't know, Steven Crowder, shit like that. That guy's kind of an asshole. And uh, just trying to understand their point of view. It doesn't mean I have to believe them. It doesn't mean I have to agree with it. But understanding things, whether you agree with it or not, I believe, is the path to enlightenment. And I use enlightenment very broadly. But if you understand something that opposes your own view, that might reshape or reinforce your own view and maybe you'll even learn something about yourself in the process I don't I don't think people look inward enough anymore they're too busy focusing on whatever the fuck is distracting them at the time they're too busy focusing on what other people think of them you need to stop spend some time alone which uh, good lord do I have experience spending time alone and look at yourself Analyze yourself and make that self the best self that you can possibly do. Because what's the point of believing something if you don't, uh, if you don't have the knowledge to defend your own beliefs? It's really important to me. Also, also this is unrelated, but unrelated to polit politics, sort of. I'm getting back into the fitness side of things. But I see a lot of people... I, I, uh, ha, this fucking podcast. My, uh, I, saw, I cite my sources like the Donald Trump. I see a lot of people. You know it, I know it, everybody knows it. I see a lot of people online kind of generalizing other people. The right's a bunch of uneducated hillbillies. Left's a bunch of fat chicks with blue hair that no one wants to fuck. Now I'm a big fan of subverting expectations. And as much as I hate to say it, and I have experience to reinforce this belief, but appearance matters. 
whether you want to or not, whether you're comfortable in your own skin or not, it's a completely different thing than body sensitivity. Human beings will judge you for what you look like. And if you want your point of view to be taken seriously, you should present yourself better. And I say this as a large, fat man with long hair. <sighs> Which I'm working on. I'll, I'll keep the long hair, but... If I look better, people will take me more seriously. And there are studies to back that up. I'm not going to link them. You're going to have to do your own research. You're on a computer or a phone listening to this. Fucking Google it. I need a Jamie to pull that shit up. Anyway, subvert the expectations of your enemies. And I, enemies is a bad... I'm not saying people on the other side of the aisle are enemies either. I don't like to commit to saying things or making claims. Basically, if you want to be heard, <laughs> do a podcast so no one has to look at your ugly ass. Or, get in shape. There's, I don't know, I saw like an anti-Donald thing that had like this giant 600 pound lady with short hair like flopping her boobs out on the street and like chugging beers like oh, that's cool lady if you want to do that I'm not judging but if you attach yourself politically and those are your actions you are making your movement look bad you are giving the opposing side ammunition to reinforce the opinions of the other dumb fucks that look at the pages they share. I probably phrased that really poorly. But I'm sure my point got through. Anyway, I should go to bed. I have work tomorrow. I just wanted to get out a quick podcast. I'll get another one out soon. Since I didn't do one last week, I'll probably do two this week. Um, I don't know who is listening to this, how many people are listening to this, but I will definitely answer questions if there are questions asked. Hit me up on Twitter. Or maybe I'll make an email for you guys to send questions to. I should probably do that. Because I think answering questions on air would be fun. Maybe you guys can challenge me in something. And then watch my opinion fall apart, or maybe I have something insightful to tell you. I don't fucking know. Either way, you all stay strong, pursue your goals, you do what you need to do. I'm going to try to do what I need to do. I don't even know what I need to do, but I'm going to figure it out and fucking do it. Be happy, folks. Take it easy. Till next time.